Good evening, everyone. My name is Sherry Hebert, and I am uh, currently your president of your Resident Association Board of Directors, and I'm also the district rep for the district that we're going to be talking about tonight. I, um, I live near Cook Road, not as close as maybe some of you guys. I'm off, over off of uh, North Shore. Um, but this project is near and dear to my heart, and I am thrilled to see so many people here tonight. Just thrilled. This is awesome. To have to bring chairs in is such a good problem to have. If you're standing, not so maybe a good problem to have. Maybe we can uh, get some more chairs in there. But again, thank you for coming tonight. So tonight's session is really to talk about what I think is a little bit of a treasure in Reston, and that's the Hook Road recreation area. Um, this is the first step in a series of many opportunities that we're all going to have to give input into, into this treasure that I call Hook Road. Um, and so tonight is really about giving you information about where we are, and then to seek some of your, to give you information about how you can be a part of this process that we're gonna be, this journey that we're gonna go down. Um, I do wanna address one thing before we get started. I did receive several emails, and I know that RA Board did as, as well, but I did personally, I think Kate did, we fielded some emails regarding a letter that was put in some folks' mailbox in the Hook Road area from one of our directors, uh, Ray Waddell. I just want to say, that that was raised comments and raised perspective um, that did not represent the rest of board or RA. That was raised perspective. So I just want to put that out there that um, no decisions have been made at all. And um, and hopefully, if you if you ask me that question, if you sent me an email, I hope I responded. If I didn't, I apologize. We do get a lot of emails, um, but I do want to just put that out there that that was uh, that was one person's perspective. Not a perspective of the RA or if I might, Sherry, it wasn't a letter. Okay. It was a five-page piece that I Speak spent. Speak up, please. Speak Ray, up. you'd have to stand by this microphone if you could. Thank you. It wasn't a letter. It was a five-page piece that I spent an awful lot of time on. And it was given just to the people who live on Oak Road. If any of the rest of you want it, there's a link on the article with Dave wrote and rest of now. Oh, yeah. Or ask me. I'm very easy to find. And I'll get it to you. And thank you. Okay, thanks, Ray. So what I want to do now is I want to talk about the agenda for tonight to give you kind of a feel for what we're going to be. Oh, I know I have to stay by the mic. I'm, <laughs> I'm more of a roamer, so this. So I'm going to get done talking so we can get this show on the road. The first person we're going to hear from is. Elaine, right here. Elaine there she right here. is. She is um, a member of our CRAC. We call it CRAC. It's called the Park and Recreation Advisory Committee. And they do a lot of work for, for the rest of the community. And she's going to talk to you about the CRAC's role in this process, how the CRAC brought this, this particular project to us, and why. Um, she won't take a whole lot of time, I know, because but she does have all the answers, as I told her. I was going to tell her. <laughs> I told her what you can, and I said, I'm just going to let everybody know that you have all the answers. So she's your girl. Um, the next person that's going to talk is uh, Garrett. He's our director of capital projects. He's going to talk to you about not only the communication plan, a little bit of, of the history of Hook Road, just a little bit of that. Um, you're going to see in that comms plan, it's very detailed. We, well, all this stuff is going to be on the website if it already isn't. Um, you'll see all the different places to engage with this process um, and frequency of all that engagement. Um, and then we're going to hear from Drew Barry. Where are those guys? They're over there. They're going to talk. They're going to give us a little bit of perspective of how Hook Road fits into the larger resting community, um, why it's so important, and we all know how important open space is to us Restonians. He's, they're going to talk a little bit about that, and then they're going to take us a little bit more detailed as far as timelines and. Um, and um, communication and data collection methods that we're going to be using to get all this feedback in as far as what we'd like to see um, over there on Hook Road. Um, at that point, we don't know whether we're going to have Kate talk or whether we're going to have you talk. I have, we haven't really figured that out yet. But um, at that point, I want to have some member comments. And the reason we're not doing that in the beginning, because that's normally what we would do, is because we might be addressing some of your questions in the presentations. Um, and then during the presentations, you might have other ideas of things that you might want to, to express. Understand we have a large room here tonight. This is not the only time by far that we're going to be collecting information from you. But if you have some questions after the presentations, we certainly want to hear those. Um, as always, uh, in rest of meetings, I like to end on time, and I think our time is 8 tonight. So um, if I start getting antsy and start getting and 
start twidgeting, that's because we're getting close to ending time. Um, but we do want to, we do want to receive all your information and all your questions. So if we can't get it tonight, we'll get it in some other way, whether it's emails or, or you'll hear about all the different ways you'll be able to engage tonight. So again, I can't thank you all enough for being here. I feel like. I feel like these are my peeps because they're in my district, so I'm feeling kind of at home right now. You guys are all my district folks, so if I haven't met you, um, I definitely do want to do that. So without talking anymore, you're done hearing from me. <coughs> come on, answer lady, why don't you come on up and, <laughs> and tell us all you know about this. Can I go over here? Yeah. You need okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that ambitious introduction. <laughs> you hooked the bar high. Um, I'm also thrilled to see everybody here because we need a lot of help and input, and this is the first start of that. Um, I am a member of the, what we call the PRAC, Parks and Rec Advisory Committee. Um, I'll just tell you a little bit about who we are because we're relatively young. This is only our third year. Um, I am a member, and I have Mike Beck, who's our director of the uh, committee, and then I think we have a few others, uh, Mary, is here and we have um, Mary Shelton. I'm sorry, Shelton. And also, is our high school student here? We are very happy. We have a diversity of representatives from various um, recreation and uh, sports uh, programs on our committee, and we also have a lot of age diversity. We have a high schooler all the way up the line to us old people. So we're very happy uh, with what we have, but we need more membership. To follow there. Um, we're made up of volunteers. Our job as an advisory committee is to do just that, to advise and give recommendations to the RA board. Um, we advise them on management and development of facilities and amenities, delivery of the recreation uh, activities and <coughs> services, and we propose funding priorities for capital improvements and recreation services. Basically, how to put our limited resources where they're most needed. Now, how do you go about doing that if you're you know, a small committee? We use a lot of analysis. Um, we do a lot of evaluation of member feedback on RA programs and facilities. Um, we do surveys. Uh, our first year out, we collaborated with GMU to do a survey of a, sec of a percentage of our population to get feedback on what facilities are used what they like about them, don't like about them, and where they see the need for improvements. Um, we've done meetings with facility user groups. Uh, we've done inventory of our facilities, including conditions, locations, numbers. We do a lot of data analysis. Thank you to Laura and her staff for providing us analysis on you know, the who, what, and where of all of our facilities and activities. Um, we also review member comments, such as the ones on the, the pools that are coming in now. We use all that to kind of answer the questions of what's valued by our members, all of you, and where improvements are needed. Throughout there, we're always looking for opportunities to engage in various ways to reach our diverse and dynamic uh, population, because there's no one way to get to people. And this is a great example of um, a way that we really want to do more to get community engaged. So how did um, the Hook Road project come about and what's CRAC's involvement? Well, this year on our CRAC work plan, one of the major initiatives is to develop a model for community outreach and prioritization of improvements for a full facility capital project. Um, Kate can probably do this more adjustment, but full facility approach was approved by the board in 2016. Basically, it's talking about revitalizing a, a whole facility. Instead of doing a singular approach to, well, I'm going to fix the swing set this year, I'm going to do the tennis courts next year, I'm going to do the bocce ball courts next year, or whatever, um, doing a more comprehensive look or holistic look. And we think there we can get a more bang for our buck in terms of you know, doing the development together, getting an economy to scale if you need a, you know, rates to come in and do something or gardeners do the whole thing, not just one little area. Um, we think we can get a better solution that's basically um, comprehensive and, and um, also values to the members in terms of what we do and what the priority is. 
Now we proposed Hook Road as the pilot for the full facility and community outreach approach. We selected Hook because it's kind of a manageable size and several aspects of the park are aging and slated for upgrades. Now I personally can say too that Hook Road's a beautiful park with lots of green space and amenities. This is where I confess to you that I'm an avid tennis player. Um, I had thought I was going out playing tennis tonight, but I said, no, not in the rain. Um, and I'm a runner and a walker also. So I've been to Hook a lot. I live over by North Point. And I value the neighborhood setting as well as what happens in the park. Now, um, no budget has been committed for any um, improvements or infrastructure changes to the park. That's what we're starting here tonight. Uh, we have an um, approval for the design phase of it, but that's it. Um, we don't think there are going to need large scale changes, but modest improvements to increase the value, the safety, and the longevity of the park's assets. After all, the park was created in 1965. Um, and I just, I looked up an example, I said, when was Earth Day started? It was 1970, because I was thinking about recycling is important to me, and green spaces, and also um, people biking to their parks from their homes or their offices more. So those are some things that have happened since 1965 that we should look at when we're considering Cook Road changes. We all have our ideas, and our goal is to collect, discuss, and assemble these ideas from you into a workable and affordable plan. So over the past year, the PRAC, oh good, my cheering squad's here again. <laughs> the, the PRAC um, has worked with RA staff, the board, particularly Laura and Garrett, to develop a plan for community engagement. Um, and by community, we're talking about the neighboring residents, we're talking about groups and individuals who use the facilities and programs that are done at the park. We recommended the creation of a working group, and just as that name suggests, those are the people who are gonna do the work to support collecting feedback, bringing priorities, and keeping the community engaged throughout. So that's a chance where you all wanna volunteer, jump on that working group and um, you'll be right in the forefront of hearing what's going on and making a difference in your community. Um, that's, I just wanted to, um, to thank everybody for coming and say that this is the start of the planning process. The PRAC will be with the working group and the activities throughout next uh, winter or spring when we uh, make recommendations to the board. Um, so our door is always open if you uh, want to talk to us or want to join the craft. So come see uh, Mike or Mary or I about what is involved in being on the craft. We'd love to have you. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Garrett, okay. yeah. uh, who's going to, he's the guy who really has all the answers about what's involved in the project. Well, while you're talking really slow, I, um, I'm remiss that I didn't introduce to you um, the other board, your other board members that are here tonight, and I want to do that so you know who they are. So you just don't throw stones at me. There's lots of people you can throw stones at. <laughs> so we have uh, Shreer Gennison. He just joined our board as our treasurer. Um, Julie Bitzer from South Lakes. Of course, Ray Waddell at large. Victoria White, who is Hunter Ward Dog. Um, that's it. That's it. Yeah. She's also, um, this year's her first year on the board as well. Any other buddies sneak in on me? Okay, so right there, that wall, that's where you can target all your hard questions. You're up there. I'm going to go over here. I'm on the safe side of the room. Yeah. <laughs> uh, good evening, everyone. So I'm uh, again Gary Skinner, director of Capital Project. So I just want to give you a, a quick, high-level overview of what to expect for the project. Um, as Elaine mentioned, give a quick history, and I think she did a great job of giving you much more detail than I was. And then I'm going to introduce our consultants who will walk us through. Uh, some detailed overview and, and walk through the schedule and what to expect and how and also talk about how you can get involved and how you can get engaged. So uh, as, as Elaine mentioned, um, the recreation area was initially built in 65 with the addition of tennis and basketball in 1973. So those assets have 
sat largely unchanged since since 73 and 65. So we know the facility is you know due for some upgrade as, as we know it's there are many aging components of, of the park and um, as, as was mentioned, Pratt conducted site evaluations in June and, and that's how Hope Road was elevated as the number one pilot project to go through this full facility enhancement and, and couple it with a community engagement process. So uh, I'll, I'll reiterate, we're really excited to see the number of people who are interested in, in getting involved and uh, we hope that you all will continue to participate throughout the, the meetings that you'll hear about um, throughout the rest of this year and, and into early next year. Um, so following or picking up where Crack left off, uh, the end of last year, um, the project was identified in the year's budget. And in June of this year, board approved uh, that we move forward with initiating this engagement pro project. So this is step one of the project overall, um, which is why we're all here for the, the kickoff. Um, so this is step one of what we've identified as a, a four component, a four phase project. The beginning where we are now is the community engagement and data collection. So you know, that's where you're going to hear a lot about the meetings, the surveys, the opportunities to really provide feedback and let us know what you think about the existing facility, what ideas you have to make improvements or enhancements or adjustments to what's there. Um, at the conclusion of the engagement period, uh, our consultants at Dewberry will, will start to work on a conceptual design in concert with uh, the approved members of the working group that you'll hear more about later, um, and kind of iron out you know, what the, the end result is. So the end product that we're looking to achieve here is a Hope Road master plan. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean at the end of this phase we're just gonna jump right into construction of, of any type. The intent of this engagement period and the intent of the working group is to work together to take in all the comments, all the information, all the suggestions that you all may have about the project, or some of you will be you know, directly on that working group, and come up with a master plan with our, our consultants and, and staff to say, you know, one day, these are all the things that we would like to see at this facility to really make it something that we're proud of and that we want to see, uh, you know, that's available and is functional for generations to come. Um, and then the, the final piece of, of this process is that we will, uh, the working group and staff and, and our consultant will present whatever that, that end product, that master plan is, to the board for recommendation for acceptance. And then over the next years or years to come, um, the board will then work with staff and, and you all to determine you know, what can we actually accomplish in year one, year two, or, or how, how long will this process be. So you know, just to, if, if there are concerns about a working group and, and what that means, you know, this is a going to be a very defined process of, of really focused on community engagement with the end result being um, step four of, of presenting a product to the board that then will kind of walk away and decide, uh, or, or the board at that time will decide what's palatable, and it'll be up to them to determine if, if a working group continues and continues with a, a certain construction portion of the project or um, some other activity. So I just wanted to, to kind of give that high level and um, also focus on the fact, that, as you've heard, this is a community engagement process or project. This is a, a quick snapshot, an example. I know everyone in the back can't read it, but this is a very detailed list of all of the possible stakeholders who are gonna be a part of this process. So we, we're naming area property owners, so you may be one of the 450 people that received the letter in the mail. Uh, you may have seen a sign out near the property or, or on Fairway Drive, um, members of the working group, facility user groups who use the facility quite frequently. Uh, all of our RA committees, whether it's PRAP, CDAC, uh, EAC, or MTAC, uh, staff. Do you wanna say what those stand for? I'm um, sorry, uh, Parks and Recreation Advisory <laughs> Council, uh, CDAC, the Community Engagement Advisory Committee, sorry, uh, the Environmental Advisory Committee, 
and the Multimodal Transportation Advisory Committee. We got and our 55 plus. And our 55 plus um, committee. So the intent is to make sure everyone is represented, everyone is involved and is aware of what's going on with this project because we know there's a huge diversity of users for this facility. Um, and then finally, of course, depending on whatever the end result is, um, we're going to make sure DRB is involved and the board of directors and membership at large. Uh, so you'll see uh, not only the direct communications to this group here, and if you sign up for uh, our distribution list, you'll see information about this in RA News, on our website, um, in other communication channels, because the intent is to make sure that the community is as engaged as possible and as informed as possible about this process, and uh, hopefully you're, you're comfortable with, with what you hear. So, enough of me. I know you want to hear about the details of what to expect, so I want to introduce Rich Brittingham and Andrew Toll of Dewberry. Uh, they are our consultants for uh, this process. They will be leading all the engagement meetings along with us and in, in, in the working group. And so you'll see a lot of them if you come to all the meetings. And uh, with that, I will pass on to Rich. And if you want to come over. He's going to scrap the Good evening, everyone. I wanted to uh, first thank everyone for coming out. This is a fantastic turnout. Um, I mean, the enthusiasm you guys are showing tonight for this project is, it, it's amazing. Go to show! But exactly as, as you said there, I mean, that's what, we, that's what we're here for. We want to engage the community, learn about what your goals are, what your wants are, what your desires are as we, as we move forward in this project. The goal is not spend $50,000. That's your goal. Well, again, all that enthusiasm and those comments are, are why we're here. We want to hear all about that. Um, I think I need to switch over to our presentation. Uh, I can start introducing myself. My name is Rich Brittingham. I'm a landscape architect with Dewberry. I've been with Dewberry for 14 years uh, from Virginia Tech. Uh, right out of Virginia Tech, I, I, uh, I did live in Reston for about a year, and so I'm proud to now be back here, you know, working with the community. Um, and, and it's a community that I was proud to be a part of for that short time, and obviously you guys are very proud to be a part of even today. Um, Andrew Sell will speak in a, in a moment. He is also with Dewberry. He's been there for two years and has seven years of experience in land planning. We sit in the Leesburg office of Dewberry, and you guys may be familiar with our firm. We are a mid-sized uh, engineering firm in the mid-Atlantic. Um, we are truly a multidisciplinary firm. And as landscape architects with Dewberry, I feel like as though we have, we're exposed to a wide realm of projects. I mean, I really couldn't be luckier in my profession to be able to do master planning projects like this, uh, legislative projects with private and public uh, partners. We assist our transportation groups on landscape plans. We assist our uh, private clients with things as small as entrance features up to uh, all sorts of master planning and concept plan design. So we really are able to do a variety of work in landscape architecture and we're able to reach out to our experts in those other fields when needed so that uh, I really feel as though Dewberry is at this sweet spot in the engineering world where we have a breadth of knowledge that we can tap into when needed for every project. In Northern Virginia, we have three local offices, Leesburg, where Andrew and I sit, Fairfax, which is our headquarters, and Gainesville. In those offices, we have about 600 employees, 600 experts. So there's no project where we aren't able to reach out to someone internally to get their insight, opinion, and expertise. Uh, you can see here a graphic uh, of the Reston Master Plan from 1962, and I think it would be remiss to not begin any discussion about Reston without acknowledging the success of that master plan which has led Reston to where we are today. Um, Robert E. Simon in 1962 drafted this plan and it's pretty incredible the notes that he put into that plan and where we've evolved to today. And it's something that obviously you all are proud of, but I may not, I'm not sure how precise and accurate he was. You may not be aware of how precise and accurate he was with his goals and his predictions. Um, you can see from that rough master plan, we've now evolved into the map you see here on your right. This is, this is from the Reston Association, but we briefly highlighted the 67 amenity features which make up Reston. Um, there's 1,350 acres of open space, 800 acres are wooded, so leaving 550 acres of more active spaces. 
55 miles of trails, 15 pools, 52 tennis courts. Current population is just over 60,000 people. Um, per your Reston Annual State of the Environment report, you have a projected growth of approximately 10,000 residents through 2030. So there's going to be some growth coming on, and that's why the community has uh, the community's voice is so important to see how we move forward to update the facilities as needed or otherwise. Uh, again, as we mentioned, there's 1,350 acres of open space in Reston. This graphic, which comes from the Reston Annual State of the Environment Report, highlights clearly in the green those 1,350 acres. If you hadn't had a chance to browse through this report, it is a fantastic, comprehensive look at Reston's environment. Um, it was just published in, 2007, or in July of 2017, so it's fairly new, and it's an amazing, detailed look at all ranges of Reston's environment, both the built and the natural. And I commend everyone who was a part of that. I, I hope that some people in here were part of that report. It is fantastic. We are looking forward to diving into that deeper where it's appropriate with this project and any future projects. Getting back to the master plan I touched on earlier. So these are quick clips from the 1962 master plan, and specifically the open space and the recreation. Robert e. Simon, I highlighted two sections there where he talks about uh, how he's gonna plan out and carve up the land for open space as it relates to the residences. He says here, I'll try to use the pointer, uh, the National Recreation Association standard of 9.7 acres per thousand persons will be exceeded. And he thinks they're gonna get closer, rest and, rest and ultimately, to about 20 acres per thousand people. Now that's 55 years ago in 1962. So how good were his predictions? You can see here, uh, currently Reston has 1,350 acres of open space spread out over 60,000 people. That's 22 and a half acres per thousand residents. So not only is it two and a half times the National Recreation Association kind of standards, it almost, it, it exceeds his <coughs> prediction of 20 acres per thousand people. So I think that's astounding that he could make that prediction not only on population growth, but how everything was planned out, uh, and not only meet it and exceed it. This graphic, both these graphics were borrowed from the National Recreation, National Recreation and Parks Association study, which was a survey of 925 park and rec associations over from 2014 to 2016. So it measured how many facilities they have over their populations and a lot of other economic factors. But wanted to include this to see how you guys stack up. And you are far and, up, far and above, as you can tell by these graphs, exceeding sort of the national standards. Double the parks um, per thousand people. And this graphic on the right is how many parks, uh, how many residents per park. For a jurisdiction of your size, the, the standard would be about 2,200 residents per park. And you have just under 900 residents per park. So that's what's made, made residents as great as it is today, is the excess of open space, parks and recreation, and that's why we're here tonight and your enthusiasm really shows that. I'm gonna bring Andrew on to discuss some of the graphs that you've seen in the back and some of how we're gonna to work with you together to sort of uh, identify what's needed in Reston in the local community, in the Hook Road specific community, and yep, I'll touch on some of those details. Hey, good evening, guys. I'm gonna real quick just touch on this falling in Rich's uh, footsteps and really Mr. Simon's footsteps. Uh, you guys can see the, the more kind of complete drawing in the back, and I encourage you to check those out afterwards. Some of you got to see it beforehand, but just wanted to kind of explain uh, where we're first diving and give you that teaser. And uh, Mr. Simon's initial vision was inspired out of a lot of his time in his 20s. He actually took a tour through Europe. And um, one of the things that really inspired him was the small town centers, which as you know, that's a lot of inspiration for the planning around Reston and how it's organized. And then in turn, also the trail system. So we really started. Uh, all the way back, you can see in the back we actually look at all of Reston, but we wanted to look based off Hook Road, what the community is, what that region is, and understand it based on the biking and pedestrian accessibility. So we did that, and if you look in the back you'll be able to see better, but we identified uh, all of the pedestrian routes that are within a quarter mile, so a general walking distance, pretty quick for commuting if you want to walk to the park. We then extended that out and identified further, you'll see in the blue, the really the distance by bike about a mile assuming a mile distance for you to commute to that park and to identify that as the community that 
accesses or can easily access this space as Mr. Simon would have wanted it at, in terms of walkability and in terms of bikeability. From there, we really dove into the community, which again, you can see on a lot larger scale out of the area, but we wanted to identify all the parks and amenities and the attributes that are within that bikeable, cyclable, and walkable area. Thinking, okay, if you show up at the park and some of the facilities are already in use, what's the nearest park, say, that has another basketball court that you could go check out? And so we went through and kind of identified all of those based off of those pedestrian and bicycling routes. Um, you guys, some of you will see the blue trail kind of going through there and cut through the golf course, some of them that you know well. And so we identified all of those, and then we went a little further, and in the back you can kind of see the organization of it, but we identified the different attributes that are at each park, or the different amenities that are at each park, and then the circles actually identify the square footage or the acreages for each park. Now I want to quick identify that this is just diving in and identifying the parcels that those parks are on. Some of the parks may be much smaller than the actual parcel that they're identified within. But we started at that kind of zoomed out level. We'll get in further as we go. But this is, again, just its discovery, its process. That's what the strong is. It's meant to incite questions, which I really invite it as we go on afterwards when you guys check out those maps. So from there, of course, we just wanted to kind of jump in and really see what those attributes are for the park itself and what the existing um, conditions are. And again, there's a big map in the back for you guys to check out and point out and talk about. And from there, I'll pass it back over to Rich. Thank you. Um, we've referenced the master, uh, Rob Simon's master plan uh, multiple times. But as we are looking now to move in the future of Reston with this population growth that's coming, with the metro coming, et cetera, we also need to look at the current strategic plan. So this was approved in 2015. There's five focus points. Um, I highlighted three of the focus points which I think are critical to Hook Road specifically and certainly all of Reston generally. The first, and these are going to be the sort of tenants that we make sure we keep in mind and we, we, we request that you guys keep in mind as we move forward with this process. The first focus area is optimizing member experiences. Obviously the park and rec amenities in Reston are what brings you all out here today and you're enthusiastic about them and we want to exactly do this. Optimize the member experience of those facilities and we look to you all for your comments and suggestions as to how to do that. Focus area two is leading sustainable change. Um, if construction is occurring on these facilities or other as Reston brings up their infrastructure, maybe to more current standards, we need to be very cognizant of the regulations and standards that have been implemented since Wrestling started 55 years ago, and make sure that we're doing what we can to protect the environment um, with any construction projects. So that's something that's on the forefront of our minds. And third, and most important, is fostering community engagement. Uh, clearly, that's important to the Wrestling Association as it's part of the strategic plan, and it's very important to you by your turnout today. So that's going to be something that we are very cognizant of and hold sort of to our highest standards. Um, Garrett and others talked a little bit about our process, and I'll go through that a little bit more detail now. The maps that Andrew referenced um, are just a very starting point of us looking at what are the facilities in Reston, and how do they interact with each other, with the Hook Road community, and the Hook Road community specifically. Um, we're gonna look up in that in more detail leading up to these community engagement sessions with a local needs assessment. We are going to expand on those documents, look at the condition of the facilities, look at the infrastructure, look at how it uh, responds to ADA requirements, et cetera, so that we can provide that information to you in hopes that it can answer any questions you may have and inform some of the decisions as we move forward. Coming in October, we are going to start with our community workshops. We'll have three community workshops ultimately. The first two are going to be almost identical in format. Uh, we, they are going to be um, meetings where we summarize the local needs assessment, the progress we've made from these very preliminary graphics that you see today through October. We are then going to uh, discuss our online survey. We are going to distribute an online survey not only for all the residents that attend the community workshops, but to all the residents that are notified by the various forms of communication that Garrett's referenced. We want to make sure that we can encompass everybody who wants to, who has a voice and hear what they have to say. And I know there's a lot of people that may not be able to make those meetings for various reasons, so that's why we have to uh, turn to a, an online survey. So we'll discuss the survey, the local needs assessment, and at that point we'll break off into small groups. Obviously, a group this size, it's difficult for everyone to discuss and, and make, uh, make the comments heard. So 
it does, at the first two meetings, we'll break off into small tables with a representative from the Rest Association, representatives from Dewberry, and representatives from the community of the working groups, and talk about the specifics and the details of a pro. Um, that's obviously going to be where your voice is heard, where we hear the, you know, those passionate, enthusiastic goals and desires for the road in the community. Um, we're going to ha probably have those, I think, alternate weeks, separate days of the week to allow for the most flexibility for people to attend who have, whoever has little league practice or work meetings, etc. But those first two meetings will be identical. The third meeting will occur likely two weeks later. At that time, we are going to go over the results of the online survey kind of summarize what the community has said through those questions that we've, that we've circulated, and summarize the results of those first two meetings. Uh, obviously, people are welcome to attend both, but if they can't, we want to be able to summarize what the masses have said and what, it, what seem to be the priorities for Hook Road. Um, at that time, we'll also begin, we'll, we'll break off into other smaller groups likely and kind of figure out how to tighten up that vision. We'll be able to look at what the priorities are from the community and move a little bit forward towards our preliminary concepts. Um, after those meetings, we'll be meeting with the working group, diving into our conceptual design, our preliminary design, and then ultimately the final concept design and cost estimates. Um, now, this is an important slide for you guys. What is the community's roles? Um, I think that we're not going to have any problem to, uh, adhering to this. You guys are obviously here and you're enthusiastic, but really we want you to apply to that working group. If you're, if you're interested in being a part of that, please apply. Garrett has all the information about how to do so. Attend the work sessions. Um, show up. We'll be able to break off into those small groups and hear all your opinions about what we should do with the park. Um, educate yourself a little bit on all these fantastic documents that have formed Reston over the last 50 years. The master plan, the strategic plan, that new environmental report, uh, the parks and recs uh, groups, uh, studies and documents. There's a lot of information out there that is fantastic and you guys should be proud of. And if you or your, your neighbors aren't familiar with them, let them know about them. I think that that's important so that we adhere to the guidelines of the original master plan and adhere to the guidelines of the strategic plan moving forward. Uh, uh, we really encourage communication. You know, obviously, as I say here, wrestling success is due to its enthusiastic, loyal population, and that's represented here. We really want you to educate the project team, myself, the Reston Association, the board, about what your community's goals are. Um, talk with your neighbors, let them know about the meetings, let them know they should come, let them know that we're friendly and that we uh, want to hear what they have to say. And um, you know, as we move forward, we just want to build consensus with the community and make sure that, that people can get the, the project that they want. Uh, here is our schedule. Tonight we are at the kickoff meeting, August 29th. We will prop we're trying to formalize our local needs assessment by the end of September so that we can kick off our community engagement meetings in October. These are preliminary dates, the 4th, 10th, and 24th. We're still determining um, the best schedules for those, but those are preliminary dates. We'll meet with the working group in November, uh, prepare our preliminary designs at the end of November after Thanksgiving. Uh, review with the staff throughout November and December, and then ultimately get in front of the board likely in February for the final presentation. What is the needs assessment? The needs assessment is uh, just our professional analysis of what are the facilities in Reston and Hook Road community right now. Um, the graphics at the back are the very first rough draft working start of that document. So that's going to be our look at what does Reston have, what condition are they in, what are some regional trends, what are some national recreation trends um, that, that may or may not be present in Reston, and just try to inform the community about what's there and what isn't. And that wraps up my presentation, and I believe there is, and we look forward to your discussion in the back afterwards. And again, thank you all for coming. We're really I'm looking forward to this project and you know being a part of this community. And, can we ask questions? Uh, we've got uh, one more set of slides and we'll be able to take questions. So we can go ahead and take questions now regarding the process that you just heard about if you have questions about what you should attend or shouldn't attend. Um, because we are taping this, if you do have a question, we need you to come up to the podium. Um, if you're unable to, you can, I guess, tell me the question and I can just repeat the question if, that, if that's easier. 
Um, really, we're focused on process questions at this point because we have all the process people here tonight. So, um, yes, ma'am, you had well, a question. It's, it's somewhat a process question. It seemed to me we spent a lot of, there was a lot of time spent in the spring reseeding that whole um, uh, uh, play area, or soccer field area, baseball area. And I just, I haven't heard anything. Where did that fit in the process? Where, because nobody mentioned it. And it, it's already happened, so I don't know. Generally that question, so we capture it. Uh, so the, the question for the reporting was um, earlier this year, there was some seating done on the, the baseball side of the, the park. Well, and how does that play area? And the, the play area, and how does that fit in uh, to this? So the work that was done there actually initiated in 2016, uh, the end of last year. And that was really a part of our routine maintenance of the field. Um, we, we knew that there were uh, some, some minor safety issues. There were little potholes, so to speak, in the field and an uneven surface and that would cause um, a, a bit of a safety concern for the, the children that utilize those two fields. Uh, so we wanted to make sure to address that as quickly as possible. Um, so most of that work was done in at the end of 16, carried forward a little bit into the beginning of this year. Um, so that was, that was purely routine maintenance that we were required to do. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. If you're able to come up and, and yes, um, come up. address, ask your question from the podium, I really like that. Would be great. Yeah. You want the name and address? Yeah, if you could yeah. give us your um, yes. name and address, just so oh, we my name is Chris. My name is Chris Sylvester, mm -hmm. and I live at one one three four one Orchard Lane. Thank you. It's a very basic question. Sure. Are these charts going to be at the Resident Association <coughs> site, and are the links there for the documents that we mentioned? Yes, we actually, the, the website will have its own Polk Road page, and all the information will be there with links to whatever we mentioned here, absolutely. Okay. And we'll be continuing to up, upload that as time goes on, as we have more documents. Yep. Is it up now here? Yeah, it's up the, now. the page is up. The page is, the page is up. Time. We'll start to load we'll start all to these. We'll start to upload these types of things. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Dan Bennington. Um, I'm with Fort Green uh, Cluster Association. I think we probably have a fair number of our folks here today. Could probably even conduct an annual meeting if we needed to with a quorum. Um, Mr. Skinner, you had identified uh, June 16th, you did a site oh, evaluation, me. and you followed up with identifying aging components. What are they? they want and what are the aging components in Hook Road that you're looking at right now that you've already identified? Uh, well, actually, Pratt, um in concert with staff conducted that survey in in, in June of last year. Um, but really all of the, the components are aging. Um, as I, I mentioned earlier, uh, nothing has been replaced um, in terms of the, the tennis court, the ball fields, the multi-purpose court, nothing's really been replaced since 1975. Uh, we've, we've just been maintaining surfaces. Um, you may have seen uh, signs that we've We've recolored the, the tennis court surfaces, uh, maybe replaced uh, some fence meshing, but uh, no significant updates that, that are, are really, it may be needed with a, a facility of that age um, have been conducted to this point. And that's, as Prack mentioned, that's one of the reasons they wanted to kind of jump in and use Hope Road as an example um, or a pilot for this project because there are many of these features are all kind of due for rehab the, around the same time. And this will be a good opportunity to kind of look at everything uh, as one facility instead of the, the previous methodology for us was just to uh, fix little things as, as they've uh, <coughs> needed updates individually without kind of taking a step back and, and figuring out are there related items that we should also look at while we're updating or, or rehabbing a, a certain feature. My name is John Pinkman. I'm a, a co-founder of Rescue Reston. Um, first of all, I want to say what an extraordinary uh, organized event this is. And um, you talk about an aging component. <laughs> 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 a 
Jim Elder and I are the, uh, the exact, uh, pro, you know, we, uh, we brought up our children on, uh, uh, went for, I guess, early in the days on Hook Road. And I know there's, I sense there's, there's a lot of, um, um, any time you deal with open space, I'm kind of a veteran of that living in the rest of four years. But um, I think if everybody keeps this approach going, keeps uh, uh, nothing has been said, nothing has been developed, but everything changes. We all know that uh, living in Reston, things change and things have to improve if we want to keep our, our town and our uh, property values as high as they are. But I really encourage this process. I want to compliment you guys again for doing that, and I really appreciate the work. Thank you. My name is uh, Jay McCracken. I live on South Shore Road, 11220 South Shore Road. And I, th I think the Orchard Green fella uh, asked my question about how did Hook Road come to be uh, identified as project number one. And Garrett addressed some of that too. You think it's, it's aging out there. It works really well. And there's an adage about it's not broke, don't fix it, but you've got to be open to uh, changes too. But my question then, the second question was on the 50,000 that's allocated for the design that was put in the letter, does that imply a very large project or, you know, because it's, it's been said there's nothing defined yet, we're in that process, but it struck me that that might be an indicator that a large project is is sought here or underway. I can try to address that if, if you'd like. So what you saw tonight from Drew Berry, who presented, yeah. all of that work, that's with that 50,000, that's what we allocated to get the design work. There is no design yet. This is all the data gathering, all the community input, all the research they're doing, that's what that is. But there is no design. It could be anything from a small little thing to whatever the community, I mean, it's truly, there's nothing out there yet. That's simply for their services to do the work they're going to be doing for us to gather all that information and to communicate it and to do all that research and then to work with our working group as this process continues to help us in scoping some costs so if uh, i'm going to throw out an example this is not to mean that this is what we're thinking but it was an example given to me earlier today which i thought was great so if we wanted to put a bathroom and a concession stand in the middle of hook road drew Berry will help us understand what that cost is and what the ramifications of doing that. What are some unintended consequences we're not even thinking of? That's what that consulting firm is for. That's what that 50K was allocated to do. Thank you. Can I have? If you're going to talk, you have to talk. Just to add uh, to what Sherry said, ultimately the working group is going to you know, come up with ideas that we will have you know, surveys, right, member surveys based upon which you know, we have a set of recommendations and then we we'll look at the costs working with Dewberry as well as RA staff and ultimately, you know, there is going to be a, you know, a step-by-step -step process. So we will come back to the community, we will provide feedback based upon what we are, uh, you know, what we are hearing back from the community as well. So. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. My name is Joey Aronson. I live at 11490 Waterhaven Court in Reston. And I have a similar question. I come from being a project manager myself, and normally when you go to that kind of detail, that and it sounds like it's a very, very detailed process to do a design, it will imply that you're going to be including a lot of features, which are going to cost money. So what kind of budget ultimately is too much because you know, you're getting the community involved, you want to get everybody's input, and there's going to be a long list of things that everybody's going to want. So where is the, it's too much, you've got to do it later, is there going to be a phased approach? How are you going to organize the money so that there's not so much cost? Because we pay, we're, you know, we are the community that's going to pay for this. So how is that all going to happen? Sure. Yep. Again, uh, as I was uh, just saying, none, none of those uh, you know, decisions have been made. So you will get, you know, once the working group has uh, finalized, you know, their recommendations, then there will be a back and forth process. We look at the costs, and then 
ultimately, we'll, you know, based upon what we are seeing in terms of cost, we will come back to the community. So it's a, it is not a decision that the board will make just like that. So uh, there is no actual budget that has been set aside as yet for this. So nobody is going to spend any money as yet until until we get all the feedback that we need and and we get it from the public once we get all the recommendations and the costs. Well, I would like to make a recommendation that at some point... Come back up to the mic. Uh, I would like to make a recommendation that at some point you give people a reference point, an expectation point. Otherwise, you're going to get how big is the red box. And then that's going to have to get cut back. Because, you know, where you, are you going to go out for bonds? Are you going to go out for a, a public vote? How is that money going to get decided? You know, if it's going to be $5 million to renovate one little field and you have 25 fields, how, how is that money going to, going to get there? So it, it's an important question. It is an important question. Budget is um, a, a very important question, especially right now in the RA, um, for the RA board as we're setting the next budget for 17 and 18, um, or 18 and 19, I should say, I'm behind a year. Um, so uh, I will tell you, um, I think we're a very conservative board as far as when we're talking about funds. And what will be different this year is an iterative process between the working group and what they're thinking and talking about um, and, and the board to say, you know, I, I, it's, not gonna, it's not gonna come back with this big project. It, we're, it's gonna be much more iterative than that. Yep. So um, when you talk about bonds and things, that makes my heart stop because, um, no. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah, no. No, it's going to be. I, I think you know, as, as Garrett said earlier, this is um, this is a process that we're kind of you know the Prague identified Hook Hook Road is this um, full facility kind of look at. And this is the first time we're doing that, so you guys are kind of our our guinea pigs, and this is the first time for the board, and it's the first time for RA is how we're handling it this time. So um, we're hoping that we get it more right, um, and that this is very much iterative with the community. As you saw, you probably couldn't see in the back, but that communication plan. One that had, was like a, like a spreadsheet, had all that wording on it. That's as many times as we're coming back and forth to the community. Nothing will be a surprise with the community. So, but thank you for your questions. They're important questions. Sure. And I just, I wanted to touch base that about phasing. That's something that we talked about with uh, the staff when this first started, that it really all comes back to what we hear from the community. If everyone that shows up just wants a bocce court, it may just be a single phase you know, plan. Um, but if there's multiple elements that people are, are interested in and the community is, is voicing an interest in as a consensus, then when we prepare our cost estimate, we're gonna do that in, a, in an itemized fashion that would be able to be taken to the board and the staff to put into a master plan for phase, where they can take in what their budget uh, needs are for each year and how to phase in those construction elements over time. So that's, to answer your question, certainly phasing is an element of this if it's warranted. My name is Tom Brady. I live in the water for Square on Fairway Drive. I think I represent I think some people in this room who think it's not broken, so we'll fix it. It's a beautiful green space. And you already maintains it very well, as we saw when you reseated the, uh, the baseball diamond. Nice job. But it, I can't, for the life of me, think spending $50,000 $50, to plan for something that really doesn't need to be done, especially because the uh, rest of the association of ratepayers more and more sweet. So, can, you, can you pull back and stop this now? Save us fifty thousand dollars to get it. It's a good question. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a I, I mean, this is a beautiful place. Somebody mentioned parking. There's plenty of parking. I mean, I've lived there for eighteen years, and generally speaking. Well, Hook Road occasionally will fill up in the fairway drive. There's plenty of parking almost every day. To scar that place of that property, that beautiful green space with parking, would be terrible. Yeah. So, $50,000, fill it back. Think about the rest of the association ratepayers and think a little more about this whole thing before you begin. Thank you. Oh.
I just want to say to Tom and the people who applauded, probably not. They are going to spend the money, and there is going to be a project. But there will be at least one board member who will try to do exactly what you said should be done. Stop it. No. Okay? That's me. Thank you very much. Well, uh, my name is Howard Bender. I'm at 11970 uh, Grace Coral Lane in Weston. And I'm usually uh, not speechless, but this uh, past remark just now made me a bit speechless. Yes. Uh, I'm here to address uh, a point or two in Mr. Waddell's letter, if you've seen it. He, he proposed putting, uh, changing the Oak Road tennis course and basketball course into a parking lot. Uh, so I don't understand what he just said. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. But uh, if I could just uh, ask him, uh, you, you mentioned two points. One was that Oak Road tennis courts are very rarely used and that uh, the lights are on far into the evening all year long. Um, perhaps you don't know, but that to turn the lights on, tennis players have to do that. So which is it? Are the tennis courts not being used? Or are the lights uh, are the lights on? Likely one of the anonymous comments on this to now. But uh, point of order. Come on. He's not running the meeting. It's not his meeting. Point of order. No, point of order. Yes, yeah, yeah. No, point of order. I never proposed anything that I proposed. It's not your meeting. Right? No, no, no. I didn't say I proposed. I proposed. Yeah, but it was your meeting. Point of order. 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 He had some How did he say stop? Camera's right behind you, so you can, oh. camera's right behind you, so you can, You're blocking the camera. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang out here. No, I just happened to go by. Oh, no. No. Oh, no. make you laugh. Uh, while growing up, I asked my father, I really need these pair of sneakers, and I think it was ten dollars. My dad looked at me and son and said, no son, you really want those sneakers. What you really need is ten dollars. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so my name is Ben Ayer, I'm from 1531 Inlet Code, I live in Lake Ann District. Uh, one point I'm surprised that did not come up was that this kudos to the communication uh, team for such large attendance. This issue was first discussed in March and there were about three members from the immediate vicinity of Hook Road that were present where it was discussed. To, uh, to, to approve the study. Uh, and one of the reasons that motion almost got dismissed, and I'm surprised that none of the board members spoke about this, 
is the study was for $50,000, which is what it is, for a capital projects budget of $122,000. So that's like saying, let me spend $5 to think about how I'm gonna spend my next $10. Uh -huh. So this is why we got to, my, and I assure you there's a question at the end of this. My, my question is, and you don't have to be, you know, uh, you, you don't have to be a CFO, you don't have to be a CEO, you don't have to be a project manager to know this. If you run successfully your personal finances, you will understand that you operate with constraints. So my question is very simple to the consulting company that's conducting this $50,000 study for a budget of $122,000, have you been given that as a constraint that $122,000 is your budget, or have you been told that you can do a full facility rebuild and here's a blank check? Because there was a conscious decision made to put a hold on capital projects. And this is just March 2017 we're talking about. There was a hold on capital projects because of how the Tetra fiasco went down, because of how Pony Bond went down and many other projects. There has not been a similar conscious decision that has been made to lift that hold. And here we are starting on a full facility rebuild. So that's my comment and that's my question is what sort of constraints or upper limits are you operating with? Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, so to provide some additional clarification, um, when we look at the, truly the full facility, um, and all the assets that exist there. Uh, as, as many of you are aware, we have a reserve study that's conducted every five years where we, we take an assessment of all the assets that RA has throughout the community and determine what is the repair replacement value of, of those items. So in the March meeting, uh, when the question was asked, um, you know, what items are, are due up, um, immediately, the, the 120 covered some of the items that were due for repair or replacement, um, but that didn't include the entire facility. So when we look, we look at all of the items on the property, whether it's the tennis courts, multi-purpose court, the uh, pavilion, the both of the fields, uh, the, the reserve study number is, uh, our treasurer can, can attest to, uh, the reserve study number for all of those items we had to say we're gonna replace everything as is, and that doesn't include any soft costs, any uh, additional infrastructure that may be impacted by those improvements. Um, that cost is, is really around $617,000, $620,000. So uh, you know, to, to sort of level set, that's, that's what we're looking at when you're talking about evaluating the full facility. Um, so, and that's some additional clarification that um, we were able to, to kind of discuss with the, bo with the board beyond that, that meeting in March. Yep. I'm Stuart Gibson. I live at 11339 Orchard Lane, and I'm a resident newcomer because I've only lived in Orchard Green for 30 years. <laughs> um, uh, I had a question about how the working group is going to interact, because my understanding is that the board committees of the board are going to interview applicants for the working group sometime in October and the working group is supposed to report back to the full board in February and I'm just wondering how that timing is going to work maybe somebody from staff could address that I can address that uh, so it, I know we've had a lot of interest in the working group already and uh, many of you may have already applied so the intent of, of the process uh, in order to make sure that we you know, kind of honor the, the hectic schedule that the board has with being able to conduct interviews, uh, but also make sure that since you know, we've initiated that we, we keep everyone engaged, the intent is for everyone that's interested in working in the working group, uh, we urge you to attend at least one of the, um, the sessions in October, so you're at least aware of what the discussions are, you're, you're hearing uh, the opinions of others around you, uh, especially if if your intent on the working group is to resent, re represent one specific entity. Um, and then throughout the month of October, while we're also conducting these, these public meetings that, um, that Rich mentioned, we're gonna be sure not to 
um, create a conflict between the public meeting or any specific designated interview nights. So if you're interested in um, attending one of the public meetings, uh, but you're also maybe required to um, interview with the board operations committee, uh, we'll make sure that there are no conflicts there so that you can actively engage with the, uh, or participate in the engagement process. And then once the board has officially designated who that group is or who the group members are at the end of October, um, once those engagement meetings have concluded, that's when really the working group starts to take over and starts to represent all of those people who participated in those first three meetings to really start to engage and, and talk about whatever the design concept is and, and represent the masses to work out the fine details to create what the master plan will end up looking like. Hi, I'm Brent Park, uh, Fairway Drive. I don't normally do public speaking and all that. Um, I was born and raised in Reston. What is the possibility of this work being done without changing the footprint of Hook Road? Um, I heard somebody say that not a lot of people use it or whatever. <clears throat> I work for Cornerstones, which was Reston Interfaith uh, at Laurel Learning Center. We bring at least 40 to 45 kids there every single day. Well, and utilize it. When you talk about Bob Simon or what he was representing and all that, uh, I worked in Reston, I live in Reston, and I play in Reston, as do the kids. And, you know, just leave it. I, I can see an upgrade, but to change the footprint, I think, is a mistake. So. And so that's an example of having a cornerstone person potentially on, on the working group. I'm sorry? That's an example of having potentially a, corner, a cornerstone work person oh. on the working group to ensure that that voice is heard. Okay. Yes. Right. But that's already been part of our discussions to make sure that. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'm Lori Dodd, 21 year resident at 12024 Lake Newport Road. I've heard talk uh, complaints tonight about the $50,000 price tag for this public participation. Uh, but at the same time, I've heard John Pinkman and others commend the process that has begun here. And I would just say that. I would rather spend $50,000 on getting community input and participation in the plan than run the risk of, of bad decision making. We've seen lake house expenditures, we've seen other decision making without sufficient public input. So democracy and public in participation cost money. So I think we need to let the light shine on RA processes and I applaud the public participation. <laughs> I don't have a question for clarification. I was just looking at the clock and getting a little bit worried that no one from Hooker Road has actually had a chance to stand up. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Anna Lowett. I live at 114, uh, 11415 Hook Road. My house is immediately behind the basketball court and the tennis court. Many of you walk by my house almost every day. Um, you probably know my kids and my husband who's constantly in the yard of the trees. Yeah. Many of you know, know our family well. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to take a second and do two, three things. First, tell you our perspective from watching the park every day for the last 12 years, and um, what we, you know, what we see, and then you know, reiterate some of the fiscal responsibility comments that were said earlier. Um, so, so first, um, the tennis courts are used all day, year round. The lights are on. Either people are playing tennis. They're playing with their dog, or they're even playing basketball in the dark. Um, people play in the green space constantly. Many of our kids congregate there. It's one of the only places around where our kids can run free with, with no structure. They can be creative. They go out there and play ball. They, they ride their bikes. They play in what they call the fork, which is the, the tree area where the, the ditch is. Um, they, um, they play capture the flag. It's the only place in the neighborhood to play capture the flag. They play chase. Um, it's just amazing free space that's unique to anywhere in the, around. Um, and you, I can't imagine taking a chunk of it and putting cars there. Um, <laughs> can, you, 
parking, both sides of the road, all the way around Hook, all the way down Fairway. And even on the busiest days, when there are two baseball teams at the same time and two more queued up to get ready to start, the worst of the traffic comes to either our house or my next door neighbor's house, which is roughly five houses from the baseball field, which is not a long walk, certainly for young families, because these are young players. So I just can't fathom that there's a, a real parking issue um, at, at all. Um, there are some maintenance needs. I mean, the basketball court could use a resurface. The tennis court um, wall could use a resurface. The steps could use re redoing. Some of these basic maintenance things could really be upgraded. And, and, and some of the landscaping of the flowers could use replacing by your way. Um, but so those sound like positive things. Um, but I would want to reiterate that our house assessments and the dues that we pay to the rest association continue to go up every single year, substantially in some years. And that we're making fiscally responsible decisions, that we're not sitting on money that we can spend and we can spend it, so let's just buy something. Um, we, what do we need versus what do we um, need versus wants? And um, it seems to me that many people agree that the Hook Road space is very special. We certainly shouldn't pave any part of it over. Um, and upgrading and maintaining the things that we have um, is, is the best way to spend our money without doing a lot of the capital things um, that, that are brand new to the space. Thank you for that. Thank you. Are you all just holding up the wall or? Yeah. Is there anyone else? Come on. Come on. Hi, I'm Irma Rousseau, uh, 115 Fairway Drive, I'm in Waterloo Square. I tend to believe that if it's not broke, don't fix it. Uh, and I'm very curious to know what kind of input do you want from the community? Somebody just, and the lady before me just, I thought, made a lot of sense. And she said there's a big difference between wants and needs. So I'm very really curious to know what kind of survey would go out, what are people asked to contribute, what they want or what they think we need. I'd love to see a hot tub. <laughs> So how much can we do that would take up occupy such a long schedule with so many uh, iterations of what we want to do to come up with what? So I'm gonna let I'll just answer this real quick. Okay. Okay. Um, the online survey is going to be a little bit more general than what we can get dive into at those community visioning sessions. You know, as you can see here, we have probably over 100 people here today. If my rough counts are all right. So when we dive into those individual roundtables and all can sit down together in groups of six, seven, or eight people with a big map of Hook Road laid out, we talk about you know what each individual likes, wants needs, etc. that's going to allow us to then you know, determine really what is needed versus wanted based on the budget of the wrestling association, etc. So there's not a concrete answer as to what each question on the survey is going to be. That's something that we're still developing and I think we're getting a, a lot of good info here as to how we're going to formulate that to sort of understand that we're hitting those key points. Um, but again, I think this kind of responds to a lot of the questions and, and conversations that people have been having is that this is a totally blank slate and you know we were brought on enthusiastically to, to help the community identify you know what, how can, can Hook Road be improved? Is it perfect as it is? Is it not? Um, we haven't been given any constraints. The constraints are going to be uh, brought up by the, the voices of the community. And so we really encourage everyone to come to those work sessions where we can sit down in more intimate groups together and really talk about you know 
your experiences in Reston, your experiences at Hook Road, like your recreational needs, whether they're passive, whether they're active, and let us, let us explain a little bit about our observations on the facilities that you have here, specifically within that pedestrian community. Um, I think that there's, there's I mean, you, as I mentioned before, you should be really proud of the recreational facilities you have here, and obviously you are. Um, but I think as we look in those at a, in a little more detail and kind of can give you our professional opinion on how they interact with one another, that may inform you guys and you hope and certainly will inform us as to maybe how to enhance them together. Um, and, and you're right, this could all end up being that really nothing changes other than maintenance needs at Hook Road. But um, I think that we need to do our best to sort of facilitate the discussions amongst all these community members. And if there's 100 people here today, I know that there's 500 that will, couldn't be here. So we're going to circulate that online survey to make sure that they have some kind of voice. And if you can talk to your neighbors that aren't here and aren't at those, aren't at those work sessions and can pass along their ideas, that's really what we want and that's what the association wants and what the board wants. It's just to you know let the voice be heard and, and see what's, what's best there before we just maybe dive ahead with you know, replacing a backstop if that's not really what, what's in the best needs of Reston and the community. So that's all I, kind of the details we can, I can even offer right now because those details I'm really looking forward to at those work sessions to hear from you guys. Okay, I'm just gonna do a time check. We have five minutes. Um, so you guys are gonna be our last two, lucky two. And then we're gonna do um, how you would um, volunteer and then we'll just wrap it up. But, sir. For the sake of the report, my name is Ramon Eugenio Francis Xavier Domingo Lamento Fernandez. Wow. <laughs> Could you spell that, please? Junior. <laughs> uh, I've lived in residence since 1974, with a hiatus in Hawaii and Italy for 10 years. Um, I've lived in eight different places in Reston. The lady from Hook Road, I think I was in your house. <laughs> Truly. Um, I've lived, I right now live on Wedge Drive across from our county supervisors, so we get our road plowed when it snows under very, very close day. It seems to me, because I'm a tennis player, I'm a softball player, baseball player, volleyball player, uh, and having lived on Hook Road, every single day I, I brought up a family there also. Uh, the facility is absolutely wonderful. Every place I've been throughout the world, I talk about Reston. And when I talk about residents, since I'm a tennis player, I'm talking at tennis table, I talk about Hook Road. Okay, it's a hell of a facility. Okay, the wall needs repair because I'm knocking chips off it. Okay, because I practice against it just about every day. Okay. In terms of the process, I think it seems to be a strained, egalitarian, democratic process. Because if the elephant is a room, it's possibly removing that tennis court and those facilities, that's bad news. I don't care what process you got in mind, but the process of bringing all sorts of people in that might possibly remove that elephant, all right, is a real problem with me. I think we got to, I think rest is fantastic. I knew Bob Simon, Simon, and if rest change is inevitable, but I think about the parking lot, I think of, gee, if we put a parking lot in there, here comes Boston, okay, <laughs> talking about, <laughs> talk about how we can make money off of it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jason Walker. I, uh, I live at 11231 South Shore Road, uh, but I'm not here to speak to you today as a resident. I'm here to speak to you today as the president of Reston Herndon Little League. Uh, I have served on the board of uh, Reston Herndon Little League and Reston Youth Baseball for eight years, and I've been president for six years. Uh, this is a process question. Uh, or a question about process, and, and I was involved, we worked with RA, we worked with them very closely to upgrade our facilities and provide the best we possibly can for our families and for the players. We serve 700 players in the spring, and we have 350 players this fall. So we do our best to, uh, uh, to work with RA to have our facilities be at their best while uh, uh, maintaining an understanding of what the community needs also. I was involved in 2012 with the upgrades to Browns Chapman. And what this gets to is, is that if any of you have concerns about what the ideas are or what possible ideas are for upgrades to the baseball fields or with anything with regard to baseball, I encourage you to go to our website just type Reston Little League, find my contact information for board of directors. I already have someone on the working group. I'm going to be on the working group. Um, I encourage you to call me and talk to me about uh, what our concerns are 
and why we would need new fencing and why we might need new grass and why we might need uh, player containment areas. And I'd be glad to talk with you. I'll meet you. I, I live in South Shore. I will walk down the road and meet with you to talk with you about those things. I encourage you not to pay attention to the details about baseball. I, while I appreciate the spirit and the, uh, uh, um, the uh, support of baseball that are in that five-page letter, the details of, of, about Reston Herndon Little League that are in that letter are not accurate. So I would ask you to call me or talk to anyone on our board through this process and engage with us, and we will be glad to, uh, to uh, have a very smart and engaging and thoughtful discussion with you. So thank you very much. Everyone. I'm Kate Fulkerson, CEO of the Reston Association. It is a great honor to see all of you here lining the walls, the comments that we have gotten in. And disgrace. one thing that I can... You just told me to shut up. I'm out. I'm out. I served as a man that served for eight years. I will not be told to shut up, sir. You are a disgrace. <laughs> Stay away from me. Ray, if you would permit me to finish, I would greatly appreciate it. Yeah, I wouldn't come up here unless you want me to call the police. Hey, if you want me to call the police, go ahead and just stand call up there. The, call the police. All right. I know that what I said doesn't fit with everything that I said. Ray, let her finish, please. If you allow me to finish. You guys are just talking about the kids like talking about the show. No. 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 Again, it's a great honor to have you all here this evening. I am one of you. I am a, I think it's about 42 year resident of the community. I used Hook Road as a kid living at Fairway Apartments and going to Lake Ann Elementary School where I know Brent Park from, who spoke earlier, who's with Cornerstones. What I'm here today is say that we need a call for volunteers. Reston is run on volunteers. Everything that Reston Association does is dependent on your voice and your input. So we have a working group that was set up by the Board of Directors, established in July. Primarily that working group is to provide recommendations for a master plan, as you heard this evening, for the board to consider in a phased approach. No additional dollars will be spent until the board has set a budget for it. And you heard earlier this evening we have, have about 116 k that's been identified in a reserve study. The most important thing, though, is your voice. So I encourage you to pick up a form that's in the back if you haven't done it already, or go directly to our website. We have a page that has been established today. Some of you have already seen it under our capital projects section. We have a Hook Road page, and there's even some information as you can see there. We have a brand new uh, web address that you can send information to. If you're unable to volunteer, but you want to know what's going on with this project and you didn't have an opportunity to sign in, just email this address and we'll make sure that we keep you on an information list so you know everything that's going on. Any meeting that's happening, any report that's coming out. Later, very first thing tomorrow morning, probably around the 8 o'clock time frame, all the presentation materials that you received tonight will be up on that website so you can access them and they'll, so they'll be available to you. If you can't serve on the working group, but you're really interested in all of the things that you heard from the Parks and Rec Advisory Committee and the work that they're doing to look at all of Reston Association's recreation facilities, I encourage you to enjoy, to join that group as well. But the Board of Directors will be looking at all applicants who would like to serve on the, on the working group. They'll be doing that in the month of October, making appointments at the end of October. Again, encourage you to be a part of the process during, during the month of October that, uh, that Dewberry has set up for us for public input so that you're ready to hit the ground running if appointed by the Board in November through the February time frame. Thank you very much for coming out this evening, and we value your input. Staff very much values your input. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.